Which areas two can, countries can work together? Which areas uh, are the priorities? This is the question about that. Look, first of all, uh, people in Pakistan have this relationship with Turkey, uh, which goes back uh, to the Khilafat movement, which started, uh, I think, in 1920. And the movement was based on uh, <coughs> trying to stop, uh, trying to help Turkey, when Turkey was being attacked from all sides. And people raised a lot of money in what is now Pakistan, also Muslims in India. But what is now Pakistan, people raised a lot of money and tried to send help to Turkey uh, when it was a very difficult time uh, for the Ottomans. It was uh, being divided amongst various Europeans. So it, it dates back even before that, but that was a significant step which people in Turkey still appreciate uh, the, you know, the help given from uh, this mm -hmm. part of the world. So that is the basis of the relationship, uh, where there has always been this brotherly relationship between the two countries. And now we have uh, a government to government, very close relationship. We are enhancing our trade ties. Uh, we have similar stands. Pakistan is grateful to the way Turkey stood with uh, uh, the people of Kashmir the statement given by President Erdogan on, on what is happening uh, uh, to, to, to the people of Kashmir by a very fascist, uh, racist uh, BJP government. So, you know, our, our, uh, our relationship in every way is getting stronger. Well, we are expecting President Erdogan around about the middle of February. And when he comes, he's bringing businesses, uh, various business houses with him, investors with him, and of course he will meet, uh, we will have Pakistani businesses and uh, investors meeting uh, the, the Turkish counterparts. The idea is that we enhance our trading uh, relationship. Uh, there are various areas where Turkey can uh, help Pakistan, for instance in mining, Pakistan is a, a country which is full of minerals, but we have not really uh, excavated, explored these, uh, these various minerals like gold and copper and coal. So, uh, so when, Turkey when, when President Erdogan comes, this is one area, but then there are other areas too. We want, uh, uh, we want certain areas where uh, we want techno technology transfer from Turkey in various areas. So um, it, it'll be quite a comprehensive uh, visit where there will be uh, all sorts of uh, ways of economic ties that will be discussed, apart from, of course, uh, strate uh, strategic or diplomatic ties with the two countries. No, this is a very good idea. Uh, I didn't think of it. I think we should also celebrate uh, uh, 100 years of that very uh, difficult time which Turkey was going through and uh, where people from uh, this part of, uh, 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 of India, northern Pakistan, uh, what was then northern India, and of course uh, Indian Muslims participated in this. So yes, this is a good idea. We would like to uh, do something to commemorate that. Uh, I, you just told me about it, I suddenly realized it's 100 years, yeah. and we should uh, uh, have some function to uh, remember that. Uh, look, my la uh, before I became the Prime Minister, the last place I uh, spent holiday with my two boys was in Istanbul. Yeah. I went there for holiday and my, my two sons loved it. Uh, because, uh, you know, Istanbul is, uh, is one of the most historical cities in the world. The, it has ancient history and uh, it has the... <laughs> the the history of the Byzantine and then, of course, the Ottomans is, is, is very interesting for people here. So I took my two sons and we went all over uh, Istanbul for a few days. Um, and yes, there is, a, uh, there is a lot of interest in tourism in Pakistan. So far, more tourists go to Turkey from Pakistan. Uh, and Turkey has a very highly developed tourism industry. But in Pakistan, we haven't really developed our tourism. Pakistan is a very diverse country. It, is, it has 12 climate zones in Pakistan. 
from north to south, it changes completely. And it has uh, religious tourism, it has historical, one of the oldest civilization was the Indus Valley civilization in Pakistan. And then of course, one of the most, the highest mountains in the world are in Pakistan. So it's a diverse country and people in Turkey don't know about Pakistan. And we are now developing our tourism. Well, Pakistan, uh, when we, when my government came to power, we inherited two of the biggest deficits in Pakistan. One is the uh, uh, fiscal deficit, which means what we were collecting in tax money and what we were spending, there was a, the biggest deficit. And the second deficit was uh, uh, the current account deficit. In other words, the dollars that were coming into Pakistan was small compared to the dollars going out of Pakistan. It was, you know, for us, it was a huge, the biggest ever deficit in our history. So we had to take steps st to stabilize our economy because if you have a big current account deficit, means it puts pressure on your currency. And our currency, our rupee, was falling in Pakistan and uh, we lo the currency lost almost 35% of its value. And so the, the first thing was to stabilize the currency. And for that, we had to contract the, this big deficit. So uh, I must congratulate my economic team. They did a great job. We have curtailed the uh, current account deficit by almost 75%. <clears throat> and our rupee has stabilized. Confidence in our economy is growing. Our stock market has gone up. We have, uh, year to year, we have a big jump in our foreign investment. So the country is uh, stable right now. Now it's a question of uh, keeping it stable. Uh, you know, it's a, still a struggle ahead, but we are now, um, you know, we are out of the, the big crisis which we, we had inherited. You're talking about politics or, or the economy? Economic, economic politics. You see, so whenever, whenever you stabilize your, uh, uh, your economy and when you have a huge deficit, uh, and the worry is that the bigger the deficit, not only does your currency fall, but there's inflation. And inflation hits the common people. So uh, at the moment, our inflation is still high, but the currency is stable and the economy is stable. Now, the, now the next challenge for us is to keep, uh, bring down the inflation and start uh, a growth in the, in the country. So we have a very ambitious housing plan in Pakistan, affordable housing for, for, the, uh, for the less privileged section of the society. The idea of the housing is to of give affordable housing to the uh, uh, an ordinary people, at the same time get the economy moving, provide employment to people. So that's really our uh, next program we are concentrating on, uh, on enhancing our growth rate so we can provide jobs to our, our younger people. You see, uh, Pakistan inherited a similar situation to Malaysia. When Mahathir Mohammed came to power, uh, he inherited uh, a big deficit, and the reason for deficit was corruption of the previous ruling elite. Exactly the same thing happened in Pakistan, the reason why we were bankrupt, because we had corrupt governments for 10 years. Exactly the same thing happened with uh, Mahathir Mohammed. But their crisis was not as bad as Pakistan. Uh, so the problem he faces now also is this corrupt, uh, uh, the, st the status quo, the corrupt mafias that were displaced, they then are constantly trying to bring the government or destabilize the government. If we had a proper opposition, this, this would be applauding the steps taken by, difficult steps taken by our government to stabilize our economy. There was a possibility we could have defaulted on our loans, on our foreign loans, because we had a huge amount of uh, uh, debt servicing to do. And if had we defaulted on our loan, then inf inflation would have been double in Pakistan because our currency would have lost more value. So, so rather than congratulating the government for stabilizing the economy, they are worried that if we succeed, this uh, political mafia will, will be buried, dead and buried forever. So that's why they are desperate and they, they're, they're uh, 
criticizing the economy, they have penetrations. They've been in power for 30 years. So they, are deep, they have deep roots. So that's what we face. It's not a normal opposition. It's, an, it, it's, a, it's a corrupt uh, ruling elite that has been displaced by us.